Hello my friends and welcome back. Today we're going to go over some common mistakes that gardeners make, especially new gardeners. They get excited to get growing, they want to have success, maybe they've had some failures and they're looking for some quick remedies and what they end up doing oftentimes is detrimental to the long-term establishment of the garden. Now the better word for these mistakes is cheats because that's exactly what you're doing. You're cheating yourself out of the most beautiful part of the gardening experience, which is the ease and the abundance that can be had with a simple act of growing some of your own food or ornamental plants. It does so much for you. It does so much for your landscape. It can even increase the value of your property. So I'm gonna share with you the top three things to avoid, and I'm gonna to explain to you to the best of my ability why you should avoid them. Number one is definitely the most common, and that is going to one of these supercharged synthetic chemically based fertilizers to try to grow amazing crops. Now, when you do this, it's like a bodybuilder taking steroids, okay? They blow up, they're nice and strong, but as soon as they stop taking the juice, what happens? They go flat. They're working out just as hard as they were before, but they're not seeing those gains, they're not seeing the same results as they were when they were taking the juice. Now it's the same thing with these synthetic chemical fertilizers because when you do this you're giving the plant a shot. It's like an injection of nutrients and that's not going to last a long time. It's not going to build soil. It's not going to help the plant become strong. It's really going to create dependency both for you as the gardener and for the plant for its health. So if you can avoid these type of fertilizers and instead stick to organic natural fertilizers, things that are going to over time build up your soil and build up the tilth and create a nice foundation for your garden. You're gonna be happy that you did that. It's gonna pay off in a big way. Everything in the garden should be looked at as an investment and when you invest appropriately, you're gonna see an abundant return. Number two, and I see this all the time, especially with commercial landscapers, is using weed killer sprays to destroy the weeds growing throughout your landscape. Now, this is one of the worst things you could do because a lot of these sprays are very bad for the earth, number one, and they don't biodegrade. They stay persistent in the soil. And so, you don't want that. You don't want your food growing in contaminated soil, and you don't want to be breathing in this stuff either. You have the power as the gardener on your property to decide that you're gonna put in the work, you're gonna break a little sweat, put in some sweat equity, and you're not gonna to turn to those chemical weed killers. But instead, what I recommend doing, the absolute best way to combat weeds is to sheet mulch. Now, everyone watching this channel for the most part knows what that is. Lay down something like brown construction paper, grocery bags made of paper, cardboard boxes, and cover that with different types of mulch wood chips if you got it, chop and drop, so different organic plant material growing in your garden, and cover up the area. Essentially what you're doing is you're stopping the photosynthesis process from occurring, you're smothering out those weeds, and everything under there should die back for the most part. Now, you're gonna have some resilient weeds. Over here, we deal with bindweed and Bermuda grass, which they wanna just keep coming back, but you know what? We have gotten the upper hand in this garden in a big way. I'll show you over here. We were just pulling out some of this Bermuda grass the other day. Okay. So we get little patches of it here and there, but it's under control. And we put in the work. We did the sheet mulching. That really lessened the amount of physical work we had to do. But getting out here with a tool like a hula hoe, one of my favorite weeding tools or a hori hori getting down on your hands and knees and pulling out these weeds getting the whole root out eventually you're going to get the upper hand and then what you want to do is occupy those spaces with other plants living mulches or just any mulch in general so that you're covering the soil what weeds really are is nature's way of filling in the gap and putting a protective covering on the soil to help to prevent erosion and create life in a lifeless environment so you can be the facilitator and plug in what it is that you want to see grow, whether it's for beauty or whether it's for edibility. Either way, I highly recommend staying away 
from the spray weed killers and doing it yourself. And you can also use other tools like a flame weeder, which is not for everybody, but it can work in certain situations. Those three tools are all I need. Hori Hori, a hula ho, and a flame weeder, and I'm good to go. Now the third mistake or cheat that I see gardeners doing all the time, and I'm not trying to rag on anybody, I get it, is that they purchase all of their plants. They don't grow anything themselves from seed, but everything they buy is a transplant or a potted plant. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If that's the best you can do, that's awesome, and I'm not knocking it. But I have to say this, when you actually nurture a plant from the seed into a fully mature plant, and you're able to see the beauty and see the abundance, witness it firsthand, care for that plant throughout its entire life, harvest from it, feed yourself, feed your family. There's something there that really opens the eye. It opens the mind and it makes you just so thankful and realize that we live on an abundant planet. Just one small seed, the size of a grain of sand can produce an abundance for decades, as well as tens of thousands of more seeds like this goji berry plant here, one shrub can produce thousands of little berries. They're little green berries right now. And each one of those berries contains 25, 30, 40 seeds in them or more. So think about that. Nature is so abundant. And if all we ever do is purchase our plants, then we kind of miss out on that whole experience. Not to mention that by growing your own, you're able to grow varieties that you're not gonna be able to purchase they're not readily available at your local nurseries. So plants such as the fava bean, for example, which have so many uses, delicious food crop, you're hardly ever gonna find transplants, but you plant a few seeds, you're gonna have yourself an abundance of food, a nitrogen fixing crop, and you're gonna be able to collect seeds year after year and continue to proliferate the plant. Other things like ashwagandha, medicinal herb, where you can utilize the root, mainly to make tea or tincture, has a lot of different uses. Another plant you're just probably not gonna find. Arminian cucumbers, another one of my absolute favorites to grow. I've mentioned it many times on the channel, but it's hard to find at the nurseries. I don't get it sometimes. Some of these rare melons and such. So just another reason to grow from seed. Check out these fava bean plants. These all came back as volunteers. And I thought I saw, yeah, some little pods here. These little young pods are delicious. leaves delicious the growing tips delicious they also make an excellent cover crop chop and drop plant they fix nitrogen in the soil let's pull one of these up those little white fuzzy balls on the plant are nitrogen root nodules and so when the plant begins to flower, if you chop it down and leave the root system in the ground, those nodules fall off and feed the surrounding plants. So very beneficial in many ways. And my favas were started with a rare variety, just five seeds. And now I've got many, many plants throughout the garden and much seed stock. This is just a portion of what I actually have. These were the Cuscan Super Yellow. And these pods just dry up right on the plant at the end of the season, easy to harvest crack it open those are what the seeds look like now I'd suggest heading to your local health food store that has the bulk bins of grains and rice and that sort of thing you should be able to find a bulk bin of fava beans and buy it really cheap and get growing so I know this video was about cheats but I love to throw in some side bonus information there so grow fava beans you'll be happy you did so there you have it my friends just a little food for thought i was out here up potting some more of my little seedlings that i got going and i started thinking about these things just hoping it could be useful information or helpful to somebody out there i want to see you be successful i want to see you happy in your garden i want to see you create abundance and have joy every single time that you step out into your landscape knowing that what you're doing is creating a better life for you and your family and the planet so with that, I want to thank you all for watching. Have yourself a great rest of the day. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. I'll be talking to you again soon.